an old, we have an office in Spain. Now? Yeah, yeah. Juan Carlos de la Vea is our general manager and we're building, rebuilding the team. So right now I think there are four people already working there. So we're, we're, we have a strong presence in Spain. I'm sorry, I don't know. Now. No, no problem, no problem. I mean, we've been gone for a while. And actually, we're really happy with the, with the uh, oh. progress that we're seeing in the Spanish market. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've seen in many, especially in the retail channel, we're really strong, so we've tried to build on this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Next, uh, the price difference between Moto G and Moto E is relatively uh, small, it's only 15 euros. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed that the Moto E sells more than Moto G? Uh, no, no, not necessarily, because sort of they're really positioned in a different, in a different market. market. And uh, so I think there are some similarities that we believe in. For example, you could, you should always get the latest Android version. Whether you're able to spend, say, 100 euros on a phone or you're able to spend more money on this. I think that's one of our key beliefs, right? Key. And uh, pointing to the fact that we believe the moment you buy a phone, it should not be outdated. So it should really grow on you. And that's part of our philosophy. But in general, sort of, we see that the people who are buying Moto E are, might be considering G, but the price difference is still such that the markets are, 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 are different. Are different. Yes. I for 15 euros I buy Moto G. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's about Lenovo, this question. Yeah. The purchase of Motorola by Lenovo uh, caused uh, a media frenzy. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. But so far you have followed the market line that you have with Google. Yeah. Uh, how will it influence your strategy in the short, medium and long term? Okay, okay. So we are still owned by Google. So the Lenovo acquisition hasn't gone through yet, right? Mm -hmm. So it is planned and you can read in the press as we can sort of how this is moving ahead. So I'm not in a position to give you an update on where this stands really. Okay. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that Lenovo is well aware of our product portfolio and of our plans, and it's here to stay. So you can see also the feedback that we've received from the Lenovo management team when they checked out the uh, Motorola, and uh, they were really happy with the product portfolio. And perhaps one thing to add is on the brand, because that's always of concern to people, right? So um, you can also see in interviews that YY, the CEO of Lenovo, has openly stated that he also bought Motorola because of the strong brand. And for example, in markets in Western Europe, yeah. we will yeah. see the Motorola brand, mm -hmm. and it's here to stay. And you help the Motorola to rise to Europe? Um, we help Lenovo. That's what you mean, probably, right? And it's not clear yet because the two companies still have to act as two separate companies. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Ah, <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> And asking for Google, uh, what is yeah. there in the rumors suggest that Motorola will be responsible of making the next Nexus 6? So today we're talking about the products that we're launching today. So unfortunately, I'm in no position to comment, comment on I'm any obligated future. to, to ask well. I fully understand. Express, express. <laughs> uh, that's the question is about Ara project. Yeah. Okay, it's one of the most interesting ideas in recent years. Google initially stayed with the project, but do you follow the project some now? Um, I'm not here to comment on, on ERA, I'll tell you the truth, sort of because we're focusing on what we're doing. However, uh, the, the whole idea of like a modular design of a phone is something that we're trying to reflect where we believe people have an immediate demand for it, and that's customization. And we've seen this in the lower end, of course, with shells, and in the higher end terms with Moto X. We're happy to announce that Moto Maker, so the customization platform, has arrived in Europe. So it's in, it's been launched, it's been launched in Germany, and it will be launched in the UK and France. And as you heard, so people will be able to That's pick from thousands of, of different options. So I think this is this is sort of pointing to the same direction. Okay. And Moto Maker also includes memory. So we're not just focusing on the outside of the phone. That's my, my next question. Yeah. It's Moto Maker, uh, when arrives to Spain? Um, no plans yet. And the reason is really the complexity of setting this up. You can imagine that sort of you have to set up a, the whole fulfillment, for example. You have to make sure customer service is in place. And so you can only do so many markets. And to tell you the truth, with such a complex setup, we need to get everything right. 
so to be successful because if we are not if people aren't happy and they send us back, back the phones that they've customized we cannot do anything with it because it's it might be a green phone with yellow and it might say your name on it so we can really have to get things 100 percent right and then we can roll it out to our markets okay yeah okay. we wait exactly. uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, like talking about the smart watches, your yeah. Moto 3600 uh, has caused a lot of buzz mm -hmm. uh, for this particular design. It's beautiful. So, uh, what is the reason to choose a, a circular area on your watch? Yeah. And do you think this year is a year of the wearables? Um, so, in general, sort of, we jokingly said within the company, nobody is gonna uh, grow a third arm to wear a smart watch. <laughs> So if you look at your arms, usually you have to replace a watch to this. And so you know how much time people invest in picking their watch today, even if they buy a, a traditional watch, right? Yeah. <coughs> people go to the watch store, they check out many, many different watches, and they know exactly the one they like and the ones they don't like, right? And we think it's going to be the same thing with smart watches. So people are not going to buy it just because it has some features but they need to like to wear it and really enjoy wearing it. And that's how we approach this whole new business. And the first thing you gotta do is you have to build a beautiful watch. So it has to be round from our point of view and it has to be of great design. And the quality of the design has really to resemble traditional watches. So that's the whole, whole way we went at it. And then of course we had to do the engineering, right? To get all the new features in. So a round display has of course many more challenges as you very well know from a technical point of view when it comes to sensor, when it comes to display and so it was sort of but we started with the market and how the market ticks right now and then worked our way backwards and we're really happy that it's there. And to your question sort of do we think this is going to take off? Yes we do. And the key of the strategy is really to, once again, build on an open ecosystem. The same way we do it with Android, uh, stick pure Android with our smartphones. Uh, on the phone side, we also stick to Android Wear. And this way, opening the watch to all different app developments that might come our way. We have some things to show, but we believe there's a lot of creativity out there that we cannot come up with. So we want to keep it open. And we also want to make sure, last point, that the watch works with all other Android phones as well. So we're not in a position that we're saying our watch should only work with our Motorola phones, but it works with Android 4.3 and above with any other Android device. Off the record, my father hates new technology. Yeah. When he sees the <laughs> Moto, he likes one. Okay, go out and buy buy quickly. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And finally, finally, yeah. finally, as uh, date to arrive, Moto new Moto X and new Moto G to Spain. Yes. So, so the Moto G uh, is available. Oh, do you know the dates for Spain? I'm just checking it. I'm just sorry. It up. Because I know for Germany. Sure we have the right ones. So Spain, the Moto G is um, also available as of today. Yeah, Moto G available oh. today. Yeah. So you better go back quickly so you can Whoa. Buy it. <laughs> yeah. And Moto 360 as of October 1st. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Wow. And Moto X also October 1st. Okay. 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 So I finish. I, I need you a lot of French because we like to do a videos of Moto new Moto G and new okay, Moto yeah. and I cannot remember all sure. the specifications. Sure. We can go through that I can tell you about the specifics of okay. what's new and the new products. Perfect. And Perfect. So, thank you for all. Happy, happy to, and uh, yes, we'll also be happy to put you in touch with, uh, with the Spanish team, because we also have a PR agency in Spain that is supporting the team in Spain, and if you haven't had a chance yet to talk to them, oh, we'll they'll be very happy to talk to them, so you can cover the Spanish market, and you can come to a beautiful Berlin, but yes. you can also stay in beautiful Madrid. Yeah, Barcelona. Yeah. Oh, you're in, okay, okay, they're in Madrid. No, but I'm from the Madrid. Ah, okay, okay, good, excellent. Okay.